Alfred Nobel was born in Stockholm, Sweden on the 21st of October, 1833. He was the third son of Emmanuel Nobel, an inventor and engineer, and Carolina Adriete Nobel. The couple married in 1827 and had eight children. The family was impoverished and only Alfred and his three brothers survived beyond childhood. Through his father, Alfred Nobel was a descendant of the Swedish scientist Alois Rudbeck, and in turn, the boy was interested in engineering, particularly explosives, learning the basic principles from his father at a young age. Alfred Nobel's interest in technology was inherited from his father, an alumnus of the Royal Institute of Technologies in Stockholm, Sweden. As a young man, Nobel studied with chemist Nikolai Zinin, then, in 1850, he went to Paris to further the work. There, he met Asanio Sobrero, who had invented nitroglycerin three years before. Sobrero strongly opposed nitroglycerin because it was unpredictable, exploding when subject to variable heat or pressure. But Nobel became very interested in controlling and using nitroglycerin as a commercially usable explosive. It had been more powerful than gunpowder. In 1851, at age 18, he went to the United States for one year to study, working for a short period under Swedish-American inventor John Erickson who designed the American Civil War ironclad USS Monitor. Noble filed his first patent, an English patent, for a gas meter in 1857, while his first Swedish patent, when he re which he received in 1863, was on ways to prepare gunpowder. Nobel found that when nitroglycerin was incorporated in an absorbent, inert substance like kieselgor, it became safer and more convenient to handle, and this mixture he patented in 1867 as dynamite. Once each year, to a handful of men and women of the world, comes a period of sudden fame as they receive from the busy nation of Sweden the great Nobel Prizes. But strangely enough, little is known about the man who gives these great cash awards. For Alfred Nobel, celebrated for the Peace Prize, by some is called one of the creators of modern warfare. Thus, to one of the most dramatic and mysterious puzzles that has ever lain hidden behind the scenes of the universe, the life of Alfred Nobel. But listen to his own story. One morning, in the year 1866, I found myself on the eve of a tremendous discovery. I had given my youth in the effort to find something that would tame nitroglycerin, one of the most perilous substances known to man. It had killed my brother Emil, but stubbornly I worked on, knowing that if I could find the way to harness nitroglycerin, I would give mankind one of its greatest treasures. One tiny flaskful of this yellow, oily liquid contains enough power to blow this laboratory off the planet. Nitroglycerin. A hundred times I tried to combine it with a hundred different substances, with powder, with sawdust, with silica, and even with cotton, and a hundred times I had failed. But a man is in danger when dangerous work becomes too familiar. My fingers were cold, and suddenly, Then something caught my attention. The fluid was slowly soaking into the fine powdered white clay that had been used to pack the flask. Perhaps here was the missing link. And now I could turn power greater than the thunderbolt into the hands of man. So the name for it I took from the Greek word for power. I called it dynamite. Eureka! I have found it! The world is mine! And I was right. Everywhere, markets awaited my new explosive. Industry, blasting railway tunnels through ancient mountains, freeing logs from entanglements. Everywhere, my new discovery worked to aid mankind. Money poured into my hands. And everywhere, praise for the successful inventor, Praise to the noted Mr. Alfred Nobel. Honors from every nation, the world's acclaim and triumph. Official recognition that will please the vanity of any man.
Nobel demonstrated his first explosive for the first time that year at a quarry in Red Hill, Surrey, England, in order to help reestablish his name and improve the image of his business from the earlier controversies associated with dangerous explosives. Nobel had also considered naming the highly powerful substance Nobel's safety powder, but settled with dynamite instead, referring to the Greek word of power. Born in London as son of Joanne Lepole Abel, Abel studied chemistry at the Royal Polytechnic Institution and in 1845 became one of the original 26 students of A.W. Van Hoffman at the Royal College of Chemistry. In 1852, he was appointed lecturer in chemistry at the Royal Military Academy of Woolwich, London, succeeding Michael Faraday, who had held that post since 1829. From 1854 until 1888, Abel served as ordnance chemist of the chemical establishment of the Royal Arsenal at Woolwich, London, establishing himself as a leading British authority on explosives. Three years later, was adopted chemist of the War Department and chemical referee to the government. During his tenure of this office, which lasted until 1888, he carried out a large amount of work in connection with the chemistry of explosives. At the request of the British government, he devised the Abel test, a means of determining the flashpoint of petroleum products. His first instrument, the open test apparatus, was specified in an act of parliament in 1868 for officially specifying petroleum products. It was superseded in 1879 of August by the much more reliable Abel closed test instrument. Under his leadership, first gun cotton was developed at Waltham Abbey Royal Gunpowder Mills. Patented in 1865, then the propellant cordite patented in 1889. In electricity, construction of electrical fuses and other applications of electricity to warlike purposes. My partner Alex and I decided to choose these two extremely interesting chemists because their inventions were relatively similar. Their major contributions to society were both that of a dangerous chemical reaction. Frederick Abel and Alfred Nobel were also of the same century, and Frederick Abel was unsuccessfully sued by Alfred Nobel due to the mass amounts of similarities in their work. When I asked Alex over the phone what he thought about both chemists, he stated, quote, I liked the fact that they both developed chemical reactions related to combustion. I also liked the fact that dynamite is in Fortnite, and I love Fortnite, end quote.